You know, Mark, it's so funny um, listening to your uh, natural accent, uh, having seen the film. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, very interesting. <laughs> yeah, bizarrely, I, I mean, probably throughout my whole career, I probably play Scottish like 25% of the time. And the rest of the time, it's American, Irish, Australian, English, um, to which my English mates always get very annoyed at me, you know, and be like, why are you getting English parts? Why? <laughs> <laughs> but you know there's nothing i can do about that yeah, I, hey, I mean that's almost a very interesting segue into this conversation considering the the short film we're talking about here main character uh, energy um so um thank you guys for chatting with me about this taylor again it's nice to see you again i'm happy okay. that we're able to reconnect <laughs> yes, sir. it's amazing oh, have you guys um, met before yeah we did a, a wonderful interview for under the influencer oh good mm -hmm. Yeah, that was yeah. great. So, uh, so Hale reached out to me about um, main character energy, and and I saw your name in the cast, and was like, yes, have to <laughs> I have to cover this project. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, main character energy is fun. We love. I absolutely love working on this on this short. It was a blast. <laughs> um, let's start with the little synopsis, maybe from uh, I don't know, Taylor, if you want to uh, take uh, the the synopsis here. Uh, what is main character energy about? Yeah, uh, Main Character Energy is this lovely comedy about open auditions in LA and how confusing and horrible and just the the circus that us actors, we put ourselves through. Um, uh, Mark does a wonderful job carrying, uh, I, I think, carrying this short. He His comedy is just, it's absolute perfection. Uh, but it... it it follows these two these two actors who are trying to figure out this open call. You've got your competition between the two, all while they're so desperate to get this role. Um, so it's a great film highlighting just the 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 chaos of the acting industry. <laughs> Mark, do you want to add anything to your perspective of uh, of this film? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know. I, uh, Sohail had come to me and said, oh, I've got this great idea for a short that me and Nick have written. And uh, when he'd shown it to me, I was like, who are you going to get to play the other part? Because it's so reliant on that person, you know, knowing, one, the audition process, but being able to take that apart properly. So that's why it was great when he showed me some of Taylor's stuff. I was like, oh, yeah, definitely. Like, this would be great. Um, and uh, we had a ball doing it together but it really is it's so funny because you know when you start out in this business you're always at auditions and you go and you're nervous and you walk in the room and everybody's there and you're panicking and the small talk happens and the pe some people deal with it by shutting down some people talk about nonsense and that's kind of what what you know the shot's about but also that horrible thing of you know so he'll said do you have you had much experience walking into an open edition room? I'm like, dude, right at the start of my career, that putting your hand in that handle, you know, and I used to live in London and walking into an open edition in London is hell because <laughs> it's like a hundred <laughs> people in the room and the door creaks open and inevitably it would be in an old church or somewhere where the door's falling apart anyway and you're pretty much holding it up as you walk in the door. And everybody's looking at you and thinking the same thing. Who are you? What are you going to be up for? What colour is he saying? My hair's not that colour. Does that mean that they want a black hair guy? <laughs> I didn't have black hair. Oh, should I have got, I shouldn't have worn pink. Pink's clearly the best colour for this. Why am I not getting pink? <laughs> and it's absolutely horrific. And the reason you associate with it is because you've also sat there and done the exact same thing. <laughs> the door opens and went, ah, uh, I, I can't believe I didn't dye my hair for this. He's clearly going to get it. <laughs> so it's, it's horrible and it just perfectly picks up and all those tiny little nuances and that's what so he was really good at is picking out in his head like i know that you might not see it on the first go but if that person's sitting there looking at you maybe the second time round you watch it you go oh god that guy's panicking or that girl's sitting there panicking or you know mm -hmm. so yeah that's that's kind of where i was at with it to start that's you know that leads right into my next question, which is the very immediate thing I thought about when I was watching this uh, this uh, film because I've never been to an uh, an uh, open casting call, so I am so curious. 
how accurate the, this representation of the of the room that you guys are in with all the other um, uh, hopefuls and then the actual audition process. How how similar is this uh, depiction compared to real life? I mean, I think there is definitely a, a bit of an exaggeration there just to like lean into the comedy a, a, a tinge, but at the same time, it's all very much rooted in in truth. Um, I It was so fun uh, playing this character because she is so ballsy. Like she's like, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go into the room with this guy who I just met because I want this role. Taylor would never do that. I would never in a million years do that. <laughs> but it was so fun, like, because I, I've, I've witnessed other uh, other people, other actors who are so desperate. They're so desperate to prove themselves that they will do just about anything <laughs> in the room to stick out, to like make a choice. And, um, and you know, sometimes it's what is needed. So you hear all of these wonderful, successful, crazy stories about like, yeah, I did this. I went on a limb and I, and I did this and it worked. And that's why I booked the gig. And so, um, uh, you know, I, I have never done anything absolutely insane like Lizzie did, but um, I've definitely witnessed it in a lot. I mean, I, I agree with with Mark, like those waiting rooms are just, it's hell. It is hell because you're sitting there and you're trying to focus and you've got those people walking in and you're looking across at the people that are sitting across from you and you're trying to figure out what role they're going for. And then some people are saying the lines out loud. And so you're like, well, shoot, that was a great way of of saying that I'm going to steal that or I'm going to put that in my back pocket. And so it's hard to focus. And then, and then, and then you've got the people who are trying to like strike up conversation because that's how they like to be in the waiting room. And you're like, no, I need to like shut down and focus. <laughs> so it's, it's, yes, it is absolutely accurate. And then of course there's some, there's exaggeration in there just, just to have some fun with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, I mean, I'll tell you this. I think, Taylor, I told you this when I first met you, but my very first job out of drama school was a musical in London, and I got it through an open audition, and everybody thought I was bonkers because this is before, I mean, I'm not that old, but it was before, like, you know, people would be posting online. You would buy the newspaper, the stage. You would open it up. There'd be some film editions. There'd be some open editions, and there was an open edition for a musical in London, and it's one day... And you got to go and you just got to queue up. And I said, yeah, I'm going to go. And I was in like second year of drama school. I was 19. I got on the plane. My parents were like, listen, there's about 3,000 people go for these, you know. And I'm like, yeah, well, I'm just going to go, you know. It'll be fun. And I get down there. I had no idea. And it was at one of the theatres in the West End. And it, there was about 1,200 people outside standing waiting already at 8 a.m. And a buddy of mine that I knew through a friend had kept a place for me in the line. And all you were allowed to do was 18 bars of music. And Taylor, oh, associate with me with this, Taylor's also a, a very highly trained singer, if you didn't know that. Um, not, actually. Yeah, there you are. Um, so um, I was standing there in line, and they only allow you 16 to 18 bars of music, which, to be honest, is probably about 20 seconds and you walk on that stage and it is like, it's like a movie, it's like a joke. You can't see the MD in the audience. There's probably only about 10 people in the audience and they're all sitting behind a desk and they've heard about, you know, 350 people before 10 a.m. And the lights are on you. And before you're going on, all you can hear is like, yeah, next. Yeah, <laughs> off you. yeah, thank you, next. <laughs> it is hell and everyone's standing. And of course, the person before you, sings like you know they've just come out of opera school for the last 10 years and you're like yeah I think I'm probably going to go home to be honest <laughs> and then you walk on and you do it and it's it's absolute hell because you just, all you can hear is a voice on you go <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's horrible but that's because so that was my first kind of like real like feeling a proper big open edition I was like, I don't know if I ever want to go to one of these ever again. <laughs> what a yeah. story. What a story. I mean, Taylor, do you remember your first uh, open uh, casting audition? Oh, gosh. I mean, I lived in New York. I lived in New York City. I, I did the wake up at, you know, 430, try to get to the theater by 530 to put your name on the list so that, you know, when they start auditions at eight, all the people that got appointments, you know, they have to honor those. And so if they get to your list, then then you're lucky. And so then you sit there all day until like 
four thirty by the time they've gotten through all the appointments, and then then they'll get to your list, and then they're just they're exhausted. So by the time you actually get in, if you get in, then you're trying to prove yourself, and you've wait, you've literally sat on the floor for eight to ten hours, and you're exhausted, and it's just it's it, it, you you get put through the ringer. But I remember I remember doing that in New York for three years, and. I mean, there were so many days where you just don't get seen. Like you've been up since 4.30 and then you sit there till six and they're like, hey guys, sorry, we, we're not going to have time to see you today. Um, come back tomorrow if you want. And you just do it Monday through Friday. And um, I don't remember my very first open call. I mean, I've been doing this since I was like in my, like, you know, kindergarten. So um, uh, I don't remember my first one. But this has been part of my my life for as long as I can remember. And we signed up for this. Like, this is just what we do. Yeah. It's part of the self-humiliation. And that's where you just have to stay. You have to let go of your pride at some point and be like, okay, we just, this. if I am, uh, if I want to honor my craft and I, and I really want to do this, like sometimes you just have to push through the uncomfortable hell moments like this. And mm -hmm. we've survived. I mean, Mark and I have survived. We have <laughs> great stories to tell. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> and we booked some jobs every once in a while. Yep. <laughs> That's true. It's funny. I mean, I'm feeling the anxiety as you guys tell these stories. <laughs> like I can really, I can really feel it. And that's also one of the things that I enjoyed about, uh, um, main character energy is feeling that anxiety that both characters are kind of like um, hassling within their own ways um, which which gets me to let's let's talk a little bit about your characters in, in, in this movie um, Mark you um, you lead the film uh, as Brian Scott tell me about his character and how we're introduced to him so yeah I took a little bit out of like just stuff I've done over the years and things and those experiences and ran with that but one thing that led into it is so he'll you know he's so good at he has a very strong vision I've worked with him a few times now and he has a really really strong vision of what he wants which is great and he really puts the work in and thinks about it and storyboards and stuff but he is also very open which is brilliant because that is the best way and he likes working with people who have trained who have got a bit of experience but who are also open in their mind to working with different ideas. And that was very much there on set. So even though for me, it was like, I know what the character is, but when we were on set, so he was very specific about, right, this is what I want to happen here. And he's not scared to take like a pause and let there be a silence, which adds to the awkwardness. And a lot of people I feel like in film now, they're so quick to just get it done and snappy, snappy, snappy. And it's like, no. You can let it breathe for a second if you've earned it. And that was where those moments where we were able to kind of all bounce off each other, I think. And that's what brought more out the characters was him being very focused about the characters, but also going, okay, well, what are you thinking now that now that we've kind of got that set? And that kind of started to really flesh them out. And for me, Brian is just, you know, your classic, like, wants to do well, has studied hard and is just at that point of like, you know, still at the nervous point, still not quite at the point where he's he's go walking in and going, I'm just going to do my thing and that's it. He's still got that, should I be speaking to people? But I know I kind of know what I'm doing here, which is why when he's talking to Taylor, he's like, you know, no, 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 no. I, I know what's happening here. But there's still that hint of like, oh, but do I? hold on, I'm not, oh shit, what do I do here, you know, um, so that's what I like about it, he's just on the cusp, mm -hmm. which is exciting, yeah. Absolutely, and then Taylor, you play Lizzie Mason, um, who uh, encounters um, Brian in this waiting room, and you already kind of uh, alluded a little bit to what Lizzie is like, but tell me a little bit more about how, how she impacts the story. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Lizzie is headstrong. And that's what I like so much about like reading the script. And I was like, oh, she she is not thrown off by this waiting room. She comes in and she's like, yeah, this is what I'm doing. I've done this like 1,200 times before this. And doesn't really pay attention to anyone. And then, of course, sits next to Brian, who kind of like disrupts disrupts her 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 rhythm. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that there's a there's a really good amount of like, competitiveness in her and she sees she sees that that he's gonna get in her way 
and she's not gonna let that happen. And so she takes some some ballsy moves and uh, kind of like goes head to head with him. Um, and then I think a really beautiful friendship sprouts from that, which I I I, I love where we end at the end of it, and then yeah. it, it it blossoms into this beautiful like respect. I think. Um, but yeah, I loved I love how um how she was just so headstrong and i i really leaned into the, the competition that she has in her spirit which i do have in myself and i don't mm -hmm. always let that like shine so like when i get to play characters like her i'm like gosh like this feels good like she's so confident and she is so st like just strong-willed and she's great i liked her <laughs> it's well it's also some of those moments as well you know the moment where you run in is absolutely brilliant at the end uh, when we go into the scene, you know, and you run out, oh, we're auditioning together. <laughs> and people do that <laughs> stuff. And the thing is, those are the kind of risks that when people do, you know, when people are sitting in an interview with, you know, David Letterman, they're going, so how did you get the part? And they're like, well, actually, I just ran into the room with a person I just met. And and they, they were like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm taking the risk, so we're doing it now. <laughs> Sometimes those are the moments that, lead on to people going you know what you shouldn't really have done it but i'm glad you did yeah, yeah. how yeah. interesting what an interesting component of the industry and of this profession um so taylor you're talking about um lizzie and and how bold she is as a character which is interesting because i think that this script um has a lot to say about um and gender roles and stereotypes and political correctness and things like that. Um, I'm curious uh, how this script struck you, um, both of you guys, when you read it. Um, what what um, like what was your initial reaction to like what the script was trying to say about um, characters? Yeah, um, when I first read it, I I was trying to figure out like. What side are we coming from? Is this is this a yes or is this a hold on? Let's think about it. And I think it's up to people's interpretation. Um, I know I have my own, my own interpretation on like um, what I think you know we're trying to say or what I Taylor would like to say about this industry. Um, but again, again, I think it's up to interpretation on like well you know we have these these gender roles or like what happens if if we turn it on its head a little bit like how do we feel about that um and of course the the beautiful comedy that's put into it which i just like i love our audition scene where we've totally absolutely switched sides and and it's and we we take it in stride we're like obviously this is how it's supposed to go <laughs> um and then you know the audience has a reaction to that and then they question themselves like why would i have a reaction to that like is this out of the norm um but I, I really like how open it is because I think you you can actually watch it from both both sides of the political spectrum and be like, yeah, or yeah. And and it I think it brings people into conversation about this topic specifically without without it isolating anyone from any different point of view, which I think is a very beautiful way to bring in a script like this because it's that's hard to do. It is so hard to do. And then you weave in comedy in that. And somehow we're all, regardless of what you believe or what your stance is, you're able to laugh at this and then have a conversation about it, which I think is great. I think it was just beautifully written. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I, I agree as well. And also I think what's interesting is that going back to the theatre thing, because me and Taylor both share that kind of starting in theatre, training and, and doing a lot of theatre first, Theatre was way ahead of TV and film, really. It always has been in the whole kind of gender roles and conforming and not conforming and being very open to every community. Whilst it still has a long way to go, but it's always kind of been there. And TV and film, sure, there was gender swapping, but it wasn't in a straight sense or it wasn't in a in a in a regular sense and it's taken a long time for tv and film to catch up it's really to me only in the past 10 15 years that that's happening so it is a really interesting subject that i think that you know if you'd done that as a play people might have been like yeah okay i mean mm -hmm. it's kind of regular whereas doing it as a film it is like oh yeah that doesn't it's taken a long time to get to that point where and people are still confused a little bit like we shouldn't be. We should just be, you know, 
not being confused anymore. So it's in- it is really interesting that Sohail and Nick picked up on that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, that's a very valid point that you make about the um, arena, I guess, that this story takes place in. And the fact that this is a really, um, a really conducive space to like, um, you know, challenge the, you know, the, the norms and, and, you know, ask the questions, right? I think, Taylor, you yeah. make a good point as well of saying, you know, it, it appeals to um, people on a wide range of the spectrum, trying to figure out like, uh, it, whether you have one opinion or you're just kind of like trying to understand it. It's you guys are right. It's a great script. Um, so, but you've talked about comedy. Comedy has come up a number of times in this conversation and that, and this is a, um, a comedy film. Uh, how comfortable were you guys with, with picking up comedy and delivery and, um, you know, feeling confident with that? Well, first of all, working opposite of Mark is a dream. I mean, he, I just remember being in rehearsals and then on set, I would not stop laughing. Like he is so easy to do comedy with. He, you know, you just, I could throw anything at him. And he's like, God, let's go. Let's, let's have some fun. And so, um, yeah, we got, on, we got on great to the point where, I mean, we definitely, we both talked about working together again as soon as possible. Cause we both yeah. sparked off each other very well. We did. And it, and comedy's hard. It's not easy, especially if, you know, like you said, we both have a lot of training, a classical training. And so, especially with physical comedy, um, and then you have to have a good amount of pacing and, mm-hmm. and then also be open at the same time to like, just accept whatever, whatever's thrown your direction. And so when you have someone as great as Mark, who's good at comedy, it makes it so much easier. Um, I, it, it's funny. I've always thought this, that like, when someone can win an award, like an Oscar or or an Emmy or something for comedy, I actually find that more impressive than someone winning an Oscar for a really heavy dramatic role. And that's ten, that tends to be where it goes, that tends to go towards these great dramatic roles um, because a lot of times it's more impactful, but I think that it is harder for someone to get credit and, and get applause for comedy. It's, it's just, it's, it's, it's just hard. And so when yeah. when you find someone that you can work opposite of, and then you have a wonderful director like Sohail and a wonderful script that we had, it all just melded so well together. And it was the perfect, the perfect storm. Um, yeah, I don't know where I'm going with that, but they, it was just, it was a dream. It was a dream come true. No, totally. I, I absolutely agree. And that, that's what it is. It's about getting all the right people in the room together, particularly with comedy. It's timing for me. I've always loved it when I work with somebody with amazing timing and because it's natural. You don't have to push it. Yeah, you might need to discuss. You might need to be like, oh, okay, maybe we could do that there. Or does that work? That doesn't work. Why does that not work? And you both know. It's very difficult if you're working with somebody who doesn't know comedy Mm -hmm. and you think, I can't, you can't, I don't think you can teach somebody timing. Mm -hmm. And I think you can learn more about it. I don't think you can teach timing. Mm-hmm. It's either there or it's not. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, like I've got mates who cannot do comedy and they'll say it. They'll be like, I can't do comedy, but I'm fine with that. <laughs> I just am not comfortable. I don't know how to do it. Um, but we all work together just extremely well. And it was a very snappy sort of atmosphere too, which I think creates a lot of, spontaneity in comedy and if you've I mean if you don't have the right people yeah that can just be a killer because you're like oh frustration Mm -hmm. but in that room it was perfect because everyone was just firing off each other which was brilliant yeah one it's like you said it's timing and then a lot of times with comedy it's it's very fast paced and then and then when you have that silence which we had a lot of silence in in, in Mm -hmm. main character energy it it packs its punch you know it's like it makes it 12 times funnier when you know when to use that silence and when to let it land and then pick up that pace again, which again, Sohil was great at saying like, I want to use the silence. And then we knew how to carry the pacing. And yeah, it was just, it was a good team. It was a really good team. Which normally you would be panicking as an actor, you know, when a director says, you know, I really love the silence. You're like, oh, thanks, thanks. Love the yeah. silence, great. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody <laughs> likes our silence. Our silence is good, apparently brilliant. <laughs> That's funny. Um, we so 
we've talked about the waiting room we've talked about comedy but there's one particular part in this film that i want to get to and i just referred to it as the scene uh, when i was talking with sohail i was like we have to talk about the scene. Um, so in the audition room, uh, you guys start delivering your lines uh, uh, for the audition. And there's just this super dramatic moment that even I'm just like leaning into. I want to know more about like, what is that moment like as actors compared to what we see on our side of the screen? Um, and also, have you had that happen before, like in a different project? Yeah, I think you've got to play it totally real. And that's what we discussed. Like, if you were doing, maybe if it was like an SNL sketch, you might play the straight comedy up a little bit more, mm -hmm. which is which would be funny as well if, if you just, you know, if you're playing it up. But for us, we were like, no, let's let's just play it. And obviously it's heightened. The dialogue is heightened and you're talking mm -hmm. about alien invasions, which, you know, <laughs> might not be off. Who knows? But, um, uh, <laughs> But, you know, that's what we, you're kind of talking about. So of course, you've got to heighten it slightly. But I think we all said, yeah, let's play it real. Like, the more real we play it, the dialogue is already the funny bit. The The more realistic we make this, the more comedy is in it and the more people are listening. And hopefully, you know, with those kind of things, I always think if you can draw somebody in for two seconds and then their brain goes... Yeah, but are you listening to what the hell they're talking about here? And that's <laughs> where they catch themselves, hopefully, and bring themselves out and think, what, what, what are they actually talking about? You know? Yeah, no, that scene was. Every time I watch it, I'm like, this scene is gold. I just, I, I agree. I'm like, it. The script. It, we didn't have to do anything. We mm -hmm. just had to say the lines because the script was great. The cinematography was perfect. The way they had it edited, it was it was just great. And so we literally just had to be like, just say the lines, just lean into each other, and, yeah. and the rest will carry itself. Um, I think it it for me it really tells it tells me it, it tells the story of what I feel like actors go through when they're in when they're in it, and you're so focused, and you're you are in the world, and you're in the audition, you're killing the lines. And then it gets cut and you're like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm auditioning. Like I, I need to snap out of it. And uh, I think that is, it's so honest to what I think I have experienced in many auditions. Um, and then you walk out and you're like, yeah, I freaking killed that. I killed it because I was so focused. Um, so I just, it, oh, gosh, I love that scene. It's so good. It's, I mean, it's, people, yeah. people ask me about that as well. Who've seen it, you know, say who are not in the industry. Is it really that harsh at the end? Is it just like, right, see you? I'm like, yeah, you can go to some auditions sometimes and there might be, even if it's not dance, there might be like a movement call or something and you are sweating for an hour after you've done that dialogue and maybe you sing a song and you do an hour's movement class and you are sweating and there's 10 people lined up in a room and they're all looking at you are looking through you and they're thinking about something different and you're standing sweating at the end of this hour and the song stops or whatever and they're just like mm, seven ten nine and twelve thanks so much cheers <laughs> and, you know driven thinking i need a medal do i not get a pipe band right <laughs> why is nobody clapping for me and you just pick up your stuff and you walk out the door <laughs> and it's like yep back to the restaurant okay yep great <laughs> that's wild <laughs> what a what a life but you know that's the life of an actor which um it leads me to my last question i have to go ahead and wrap up but leads me to my last question which is um you know with your experience in the in your career um and this film to kind of give a little insight maybe hyperbolize but a little insight into what these casting calls are like what are your recommendations for people who are actors or aspiring actors that's a really good question. Um, I mean, even though we we absolutely like po poke holes and we poke fun of the waiting rooms, and the open calls, and the just the, the chaos of this industry, uh, the main thing that I I think I would like to just recommend to other to other aspiring actors is like you have to let go of your pride. Like at the end of the day, you just have to have fun. And like, who cares what the people at the other end of the table are thinking? Who cares about what the other actors who are in the room waiting with you are thinking about you? Like, if this is what you want to do. If this is what you feel like you're created to do, then sometimes you have to go through 
these horrible situations and live through it. And then you get to tell great stories like Mark and I, and you say, oh my God, I remember this one time where so-and-so and said, and you know, and it's just, it's part of it. But at the end of the day, like we are blessed to be able to go into a room and tell a story and have fun doing it. Um, even if you don't book the job, even if you don't book the, do- book the job, you still have the opportunity to go in and step into someone else's shoes and play around and use your imagination and get creative. So always, always think of it as, as a half glass full situation and, and like a child, like you just got to go on the playground and have some fun. Um, so yeah, that's what I would, I would just let go of your pride, have fun, get creative. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah, I totally, I totally come off the back of that as well. And the one thing that I learned after a few years in the business, and I try to remind you, can't always remind yourself of it. If it, you're up for an addition that you want more than anything the planet, sometimes everything you've learned goes out the window, and you're just like, I just want this so badly. It's going to happen. You can't help it sometimes. But generally speaking, the best thing I ever get told was. Most of the time, sometimes you deal with people who are not like this, but most of the time, that casting director, that producer and that director, they desperately want you to be the person. That's Mm -hmm. what they want. When you walk in, they're like, we want this to be them. So they're more so than most, they're rooting for you. Even if their face doesn't show it or their actions don't show it sometimes, you know, uh, sometimes you go into an audition and the person's not looking at you at all and you think oh I'm sorry am I boring you is your paper more important but actually what they're doing is thinking about what you're doing and looking up slightly but they're also reading your stuff and going well they'd be good at that because of this and oh maybe that's why they would work here so you just never know you have to forget when you start that audition that they're there apart from the person you're talking to and know that they just want you to be it because they want to get it done. They want <laughs> they want to cast it. Yeah. And I also think like I, you know, I've been on the other side of the table before. I have produced and cast films, and I, before before I did that, I wouldn't. It's hard for me to be like, yeah, that's true. Like it was hard for me to believe that. But now having been on the other side of the table, I get so excited when I see someone just really living in the scene or are there even if it's not what I was thinking the scene was about but they brought their own interpretation to it god it's so exciting and so now it's it is trusting the fact that they are the the producers the directors the casting directors they're creatives in their own ways too and so they want you to to kill it just as much as you want to kill it so um absolutely like rest in that truth and and know that that they're on your side at the end of the day yeah that's great really really good feedback guys um this conversation has been so much fun. I really appreciate you guys for taking the time to chat with me about um, your roles in main character energy. And uh, yeah, I'm wishing you guys in the film the best of luck going forward.